He works many hours. He's on every day around. And late at night. So they just sort of Hi, Josh. It's going well. How are you? Running late. Hours. Oh, no, you're just in time. You, man. That's so busy. That's real crazy. I don't want to say the tenant. I just I don't have the same since I've been here. I have not seen but he not getting the natural. Yeah, I've seen everything fly. Okay. Take mine. I've seen no new info coming in. This was a busy I'm gonna just have that one. I'll just I'll just print another one. But the problem is, I don't know what we're going to do. That's why I want to have I don't have any problems with money. You got a good For example, yeah, like you got a nice receipt. And that's what I'm doing. If I'm selling something, I try to get an idea of market values. Trades list to the sellers. We describe this, yes, we can get the value when that's worth so much more. I'm glad it's that way. That's just guys on video. That's the true prices. It's a lot of I know, that, was, that was great. What was bad because it hurt the little lot. I think that's good. Farmers, you know, that's the Yeah, I don't know. I'm wondering if you'll be wrapped up by this right now. Oh, wow. Right. Here's how we say it. Okay. Just a reminder if you, uh, you're you going to speak, get to a microphone. We are uh, live streaming this. Uh, so. We want everybody to be able to hear. With that, we'll call the meeting to order and rise to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, public forum. Does anybody wish to speak at public forum? All right. Uh, we'll look to move uh, the agenda. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dave Minky, County Administrator. Just a correction to the consent agenda on the spelling of McKenna's name. It's with an M-A rather than an M-E. And then the start date of June 5th versus May 17th. I'll move. Ludwig. Second. Motion by Ludwig. Second by Waldham. Approve the agenda. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We'll look to approve the minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 County Board minutes and summary for publication and the May 9th special meeting uh, committee of the whole. I'll second. Motion by Lovegren, seconded by Moore. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Minutes uh, and correspondence, the Pine County Zoning Board minutes of March 23rd and the Initiative Foundation correspondence from May 2nd. Ludwig will move. Second. Motion by Ludwig, seconded by Moore. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? 
uh, uh, passes. We'll look to move, uh, approve the consent items. You've had those in front of you for several days. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Moore, seconded by Hubgren. Uh, any discussion? Uh, I did have one. I was on the committee. Well, maybe I had two. Uh, where does that put us with Sessler uh, contracts? Just two? Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, Commissioner Moore. Kelly Schroeder, County Auditor Treasurer. There are still three that um, have their own local assessor. Okay. Do you know them out there? Um, Sandstone, Pine Town, and Mission Creek. Okay. Sandstone City Township. Uh, I think that's all I had for you. And then I don't know, Mark. I know he hit on this a little bit, but these contracts, these were from a couple of years ago or something, wasn't it? it was, I think most of them are last year's. Last well, year's final. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. They, they just got the paperwork done. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll move on to the personnel committee report. I'm going to take the. Can we take a map? Or... Okay, so we met uh, Monday, May 8th, made the following recommendations and highway acknowledge a retirement maintenance mechanic, uh, Derek Johnson, effective August 25th, 2023, approve the backfill position, any subsequent vacancies that may occur to. The internal promotion or not? Sure. Uh, should I just keep do the next one and then? Yeah. Then stop. Okay. Acknowledge the resignation of Corrections Officer David Pangrel and Corrections Officer Hayden Pangrel, effective April 22nd, 2023, and approve the backfill of the positions and any subsequent vacancy that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. And I'll make a motion for them to, and then I think we'll move on. Okay. I'll second. Got a motion by Moore, second by Ludwig for the retirements and uh, resignations. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, so then um, the next uh, deal we were working on was recommend the negotiation memorandum of understanding for the following uh, elimination of step one of the pay scale and renumber steps one through five, year nine, year 15, performance as shown below. And this is for the corrections officers and dis dispatches. Um, then offer a one-time retention bonus for corrections officers at the following years and amounts and that that scale is there um i think we'll just do that as one is that sound i'll make a motion to approve that josh made a motion to approve the new Schedule as we've got in front of us. The schedule or the schedule and the retention bonus. Yep. Both of them? Yep. Was your question too? Um he made a motion. I just wanted to make sure that both the retention schedule and the yeah. um, thing. Okay. So I made a motion for them. I figured we'll just so I'm looking for a second. I'll second. For you. We'll take Lufkin or her first. Any, uh, David had some. I, I just want to add, Mr. Chair. Yeah. On the, um, the one time bonus, it, it won't add to the annual. So if you do a raise later, you know what I mean? Instead of it, we went with that at those steps. So there isn't an exponential growth built into that. And, do you want to say something other than that? But uh, and that was that's kind of why I left it at this, is because I thought there would be a little more discussion. But um, I would 
just say too, we were we just kind of re looked over uh, the correction dispatcher. I mean, we're just at such critical levels. We just saw we're we're in the middle of a contract with these. So we've done this once before by by getting rid of the step one. It does better align us with uh, with the with the market, um, and then it just gets people there a little quicker. So it it just is. So we just we just jumped every step. I mean, we just so when a new person comes in, the new step one is the old step two, basically or three. Yeah. Yeah. So and then we didn't add any steps, so they get but there a little step quicker. nine is it's the same level, they just that's, get there quicker. That's year nine. So that's after the steps are your anniversary. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Yep. So then that is still year nine, and then the 15 year um, is on it. So then by doing that, we just want to make it sure that the people that have been here a little while don't feel like uh, they are left out. So that's why we looked at the, the one time bonus and uh, um, decided to go with that. So we had we did have a lengthy conversation. Rod presented everything like always, great and. Uh, but we're just trying to, and and we really are just not looking at pay. We're looking at a bunch of other stuff. I know I threw a bunch of stuff out there that I don't know how or what to do, but just trying to figure out a better way to um, to to re recruit people and retain them. So um, I think everything's had a retention also. Yep, yep. We're we're losing because other places are laying on a lot more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I heard yeah. a story that somebody we lost somebody out of the jail yeah. because okay. they, they can they they got like an eighteen thousand dollar signing bonus mm -hmm. to go to the federal prison. Plus, it's pretty hard to really compete easy. with that. And, and we've already pulled the pot, yeah, because of man being a person in this. And this isn't unique to us. So, it, 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 I mean, it's it's just it's a hard job, um, and people are deciding to do other things. And the the workforce just ain't there. So this this makes us at least the people that are out there um, makes us look a little more attractive. Um, to to get we're kind of falling in line with what everybody. We're not quite as much as what everybody's out there, yeah. but enough that people might not move. Yep. Yeah. I know it was essential for some jobs and training, and you had all these counties that were there, and they all talked about this issue. I yes. mean, it's the sheriff's department and the you know, the correction officers is it's a big one statewide. I I think we know from going to AMC, and, and, and we're actually better off than the people that are. You know, you get to the southwest and the northwest part of the state. Um, they're really struggling. Um, many of them do not have jails. They have a holding place. They have or they can bring them back to the county. And it, it's it, it's changed. It's it's going to change the way we do business probably for a long, long time until <clears throat> when. Reese, you probably hear about it from your colleagues around the around the state. That it, it's just changed the way we don't have the jail right downstairs anymore across the hall. It's right. different times we're in, and that's part of this is just trying to give uh, the Rod and and his team. The tools they need to try to get people, keep people, in. and we, I do appreciate everything they're doing down there. So, and everything all the employees are doing. So, uh, thank you. Anybody got any more questions? If not all in favor of, of this proposal. All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you, folks. All right. I see you're working that. I know it wasn't an easy talk or process. Oh.
Well, it's Rod does does good. because he does such a good job. He does a good job. So, so thank yeah. you to both of you for it, doing that. He lays it all pretty good. So that's, I appreciate that. Um, assessor's office, we'll keep moving on. Acknowledge the resignation of property appraiser Shona Hughes, effective April 27, 2023, and approve the backfill of the position, any subsequent vacancies that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. And uh, Health and Human Services, approve the temporary staffing plan to assist the increased workload from the end of peacetime emergency waivers and to delegate to the administrative authority, administrator authority to adjust the plan if necessary. And if within the total state allocation, the estimated cost for one year plan is $158,500. The state has allocated $225,301 to the Pine County to cover the associated costs. And then in administration, acknowledge the retirement of extension administrative assistant Roxanne Orvis, effective May 31st, 2023, and authorize the full time backfill of the position. Keep the position a county position and review and update the job description and authorize the backfill any subsequent vacancies that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. And in the sheriff's office, recommend the annual performance increase under section 10 of the county policy manual and set the chief deputy's salary at $110,552, effective May 26, 2023. And I will make a motion to approve the rest of that. I'll second. Any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thanks. That's a lot of work you guys did. It's tough. You've had a lot of stuff going on, I know. Um, And that will move us on to the timber auction results, which uh, I, I think we're all um, quite pleasantly pleased with. So, uh, Greg, you want to explain that? Uh, Greg Beck, Pine County Land Commissioner and County Forester. Um, we had our uh, timber auction May 10th. Uh, we offered uh, a little over 7,000 pounds of timber. Uh, and it brought in, after all the bids were received, a little bit over $323,000. We had approximately 10 loggers at our uh, auction. And uh, the sales, um, I, I passed out. I think you might have another copy here of uh, what what our mailing is for our for our uh, for our loggers. It's a little bit more involved than the basic uh, results of the auction. Uh, out of our seven sales, we had we had a couple of them that were maybe like two or three hundred boards in size, and then our largest one was uh, at uh, just a little over twenty five hundred boards. The uh, Value every you know most most landowners and loggers always look at what Aspen is bringing. It is pretty much the, uh, the money maker uh, in the pulp industry. Uh, our our sales were anywhere from uh, twenty five dollars a cord up to seventy seven dollars a cord, and a lot of that's based on the size of the wood the timber, also the size of the timber sales, as well as the ground conditions that are out there. The uh, $77 cord timber was uh, that was basically uh, the, the 2,500 cords. And it, it's, it sits on sand, which is uh, can be worked at any time of the year. That, that, uh, that sale could most likely even be worked right now, being as wet as it has been. So the soils, do make a considerable difference on the value of the timber. A lot of uh, landowners and the loggers do not like to see that, oh yeah, the timber went up to $55 a cord um, on the Aspen because then the uh, landowners see that and think, well, you know, maybe ours is worth that too, but there's a lot of different factors in appraising timber. 
And like I say, our bottom sale was like $25 a cord on, on a stumpage. Um, I don't know. Is there any, any questions? It was, uh, I was kind of really brief. I, I, I appreciate all of that. Uh, uh, Greg, as a, as a guy, you know, when I needed some money to buy a motorcycle or something, my dad used to point to the chainsaw in the woods and, say, <laughs> you know, we, we used to sell pulp at the pulp mill in, in my hometown for ten dollars a cord um, and then we had to pay a trucker to haul it you know something for popple was like 50 cents a cord good old days and, and saw logs <laughs> saw logs were were worth something now i look at the ash with this beautiful beautiful timber and they're paying eight dollars a cord and, and fifty dollars for popple you know it's like Wow, the world has changed. Just roughly, how many acres were involved? Um, that I did not add up before. <laughs> um, if you look on on uh, on the, uh, I don't know what we passed out for the uh, the uh, loggers there, um, the mailings. Yeah, they were anywhere from like 12 acres on some of the smaller ones, smaller sales upwards to uh, 50 to 106 acres. But I didn't add all five acres. Oh, it's really sad. Um, but, um, these, these sales that we offered are different too. The first couple sales are thinnings where we go out and we mark each individual tree. And what we're looking at that is to... Uh, um, improve the growth on our oak and uh, uh, favor the, favor our crop trees is what we call them. So we cut a lot of the uh, smaller, more suppressed trees around those, kind of like pulling carrots out of the garden. You know, you have to thin them out a little bit so that the other ones can grow a little bigger. And then the uh, our uh, aspen sales; those are typically clear cut because uh, aspen enjoys full sunlight for maximum growth. Although we do have residuals and buffer areas that we uh, incorporate into the sales as well. Uh, the smaller sales are more attractive to our smaller loggers, of course. Um, we have some of our larger operators, uh, Brad Ritke is one of them, uh, Carlson Timber, just to name a couple of them. They're geared more for our uh, larger pulpwood sales, whereas uh, like uh, on our smaller operators, Wayne Blinky purchased number one, True North Firewood uh, purchased track two. We have other smaller operators in the county, uh, Gibson Logging, uh, Sodders, uh, just to name a few of them, but they typically purchase the smaller sales and uh, it's good to offer a little bit of variety for every, you know, cracks a lot of the more lot variety of, of the uh, loggers in it. We do need to keep our smaller operators in timber as well. Although this is just a small offering of what is actually available. The state has sales as well. It's private. And the thing, the thing I know, you know, happens is doesn't have their... I mean, they don't cut their own wood. They usually contract with capsules um, or solders or yeah, or somebody. Yeah, correct. For um, the mill, you'll see on here the mill, Safi, um, purchased two sales. Their main cutters in this county are uh, sawmill and logging as well as Carlson Timber. Um, who was there to bid up the sales? which is not on here is future wood. And they're the ones that have capsules cut for them, uh, wood cues, uh, sometimes solder too will cut for them. Uh, but yes, it, it's uh, the mill doesn't have their own old crews, but they look, they uh, contract out with local loggers. I have one more too, Greg. Do you have any better idea on how much 
damage we had to our young bulls aspen? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, no winter. The good news is I don't think it's as bad as originally thought to be, although it is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> if I can say that's anything decent. Uh, the state just did some flights for assessments on that, and we just received those uh, flights this week and are overlaying them on our inventory. And then we're going to go out and see if we can actually see the damage that occurred. But some of those more severe stands, and it, it's your Aspen stands from anywhere from 10 years of age to about 25 years of age. Some of them got nailed very hard in, in areas, and it's so bad you can't walk through them. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a catastrophe in some areas. And the uh, damage, pretty much I would say the severe damage is Askove north into Carlton County and then easterly into Wisconsin. And it pretty much didn't discriminate. It was everything from 10 to 25 year old. What they do if it's flat like that? <laughs> well, there has been some discussion of getting equipment in and uh, roller chopping it, smashing it back down, hoping that it will regrow again. Uh, we're also, we, we've done it in the past, but we have uh, the American Bird Conservatory and they have grants and then they will uh, basically do that, put it back into a younger growth. And it's all through grants. So we're going to be working with them on some projects. Some of the problems is, is it's so remote, some of our some of the damage. And this isn't just county. I mean, it's state, it's private, it's right across the board. Um, so we're I had a wait and see um, position right now and be addressing the more severe damaged areas. Now, some areas are damaged, but as you know. Through walk, if ever walk past them clear cuts, even when they're they're older, there's maybe ten thousand ten thousand stems per acre, and as they grow, they eventually die out and thin out to maybe like about maybe five six hundred stems per acre. So our you know fingers crossed that it, those that are still standing fill in the gaps and the damage won't be nearly as visible in the future um, as first predicted, but I do believe we're going to suffer some financial difficulties on those damaged areas in about 20, 25 years when it's time to harvest those stands. I have quite a couple of questions. Maybe just yeah. How long, you know, you clear cut, you harvest, how long duration years before you can harvest again you know yeah. money coming in forestry terms they call that rotation age uh there's different ways of looking at it um the state is at 40 years uh we're at and some of the other counties are at 50 years of age the, the difference is uh you know, you give it an extra 10 years, you're going to get an extra pulp stick or two on top and the timber is going to be a lot more appreciated, so to speak, by, by the purchasers of the timber. But yet at 40 years of age, your higher quality stands will be profitable. Based on soil type? So soil type is a big, big, big issue, yes. So you got like, you'd have a best case scenario and you have a worst case. Rex sunlight, sand, easy. That's your best case for Aspen. Correct. Yes. And the lower growing um, uh, areas uh, would probably, uh, yeah, you might want to stretch that out to a little longer. What we call location age, 50 years of age. But yeah, your better stands, site index is what they call it. Uh, those, a lot of those are, Merchantable at forty years of age. Yeah, I don't. I don't know much about it, but 
So it really then you take your income and divide it by 40, and that's what you've earned per year. That would be correct on figuring uh, that particular track of land. Yeah, on that forest, Dan, that would, that you could, you could make some assumptions on that, correct? All right, thank you. And as uh, Steve mentioned earlier, I know you go back 40 years ago and he was buying wood for 50 cents a cord, <laughs> you know, and now it's up to we're averaging 55. I mean, and, uh, you know, when some of those stands are more merchantable, it may be, be a lot higher in value at that point. Well, then wood is one of the commodities that we're going to be running out of. Same with gravel, you know, you can't create more. And so it's it's nice to have this land that will create and keep it and be able to utilize it. This and need the wood in the future too. Yeah. Whereas gravel is not renewable, and we're having some issues from what I understand in the county trying to locate new pits. Where you know, just like a corn crop, I mean it will eventually mature and we'll have another crop of timber. Well, thanks, Greg. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank I'm an interest. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thanks. That's good. Mr. Chair? It's just one, one more question, Greg. Is, is this, uh, then I'll get to you, Dave. Is this considered an average cut or an average sale? Yeah, I would say. Over a 40 year period, is this about how many? Boards you would offer? Um, recently, yes. Our our uh, auctions have been somewhere around anywhere from a bottom end of maybe 5,000 cords up to 8,000 cords. So this is average. What, um, what occurred years ago was um, we had what was called an accelerated cut yep. where we cut, if, if it was age 50, we cut all of it. Which through our at that point we were we we're cutting about 550 acres of aspen a year, and now we're down to about 300 because of that. And we're going to hit what's called, in forestry terms, they call it the wall. And what that is is it's when what you've cut in the past isn't quite mature yet, and there's going to be a wall of young timber that's not quite ready to cut. So in a few years, maybe five or so, we're going to be experiencing that. And then at that point, we may be harvesting some of our younger stands to try to make up for it. And, you know, like our 40 year old timber, maybe even a little bit younger than that on our higher quality sites. And then after that point, there'll be a lot more timber that has matured and then we can address that. So right now I would say, yeah, this is, this is a fairly average auction for right now. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. David's got a question. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, it does, doesn't involve you, Greg. It, All right. The consent agenda, there was a misprint where there was a Hayden Brown and a David Pengro who resigned as correction officers, it printed as Hayden Pengro. So I just wanted to clarify two correction officers, Hayden Brown, David Pengro, they're the two that resigned. Is that accurate, Debbie? So I just wanted to be sure that everybody was tracking on that if you caught that uh, error on the agenda. I didn't know it was an error, <laughs> but thank you. All right, we'll move on to commissioner updates. The Gallagher um, Health Insurance meeting. Who can report on that? It was a pre-insurance meeting. Um, we met him. <laughs> it was a, a meet. So right now we have, to be remember, I'm $699,192 in our account, which is good because we have a balance. <laughs> so that's really good. Um, so we're looking at a possible dental increase. Um, we probably will have a dental increase. Envision looks like it will be good. 
Um, the, the insurance meeting is actually this week on Thursday. Oh. So we'll find out more. This was just a pre-insurance meeting to let us know where things were at and so we get a better idea. And Justin... Justin is, is no, no longer, longer with them. And Justin was so incredible that they have they had were there four people in that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I mean he he was great that we're gonna miss Justin, but I think that we have a good team. But we think we're still in good hands. I, I do I yeah, yeah. Like I said, they have it's a good team. There were four of them that were there, so they all did like a little different things. Okay. And so um they'll be working together. East Central Solid Waste, uh, we're still moving along forward on the application for the next cell. Um, that, that's coming along. Um, How long does it take to build one? Uh, they're going to do a lot of the work themselves, some pre-work. So a lot of dirt moving uh, will be done. Our new assistant guy is kind of into that. So... That'll help, but it, it'll take a construction season. I mean, the big the big job is to put that liner in. If if you've ever helped anybody put a pool liner in, you know how nerve wracking and frustrating that would be. Well, this is like a liner in a five acre field. You know, it's a <laughs> it's a lot of rubber to put down. So. Uh, that that takes us some specialized equipment and people. But then we'll be ready for seven, eight more years. Um, and then the, the other the other thing is, you know, the generator that I've talked about that's there is um is owned by Simpa, which is a uh Co-op that sells to municipalities, or they're they're a grid made up of um, municipalities, and uh, they're they're like uh, not big into these generators. So, um, and they've had a lot of issues with it. Uh, the thinking is maybe. Um, as, as that contract nears its end, there are companies that buy that that that's their job. They own generators at landfills all over the United States, all over the world. And one of those companies would come in and take over the management of this and and we think we'd have much better results. Uh, you know. Anyway, time will tell. Central Regional Library. So the fun news is that we're closing the Sandstone Library from May 29th to June 3rd to move everything from the old library into the new library. And they figured that they'll have a soft opening at the new library. They don't think it'll take that long to get everything moved in there. Um, so, but the library should be opening after the 3rd of June. When, um, we did do an allot zone training with the C Brumler Hope Network. Um, we no decisions are being made yet what to do, but um, everybody was there to get the information and they did the full presentation. So anybody that was there was able to take some allot zone home with them. And then we'll see um, see what people think about where that's going to go, that action. If it's going to be something that we'll hand out at the libraries, or if we'll just have it in the um, and the first aid kits like the AED so that people can treat other people if they have needs. Um, the CMLE, and I don't know what that stands for, I'll be honest, um, but they um, they had been meeting, I want to say over by Malacca, and the, they sold the, this um, building that it was in, and everything was just kind of closing down on people that were administering that don't want to administer it anymore. And so we did vote to have East Central Regional Library do a proposal to host that for one year, and it would be um, it would be it, it would pay a little bit more than what the expenses would be for the employee that would take care of that, and then see where they want to go. She figured that there'd be three or four more places that would put in a proposal. So we're going to see where that's going to go. Um, they said that the legacy fund was increased by two point fifteen million. Um, so, and they're not real sure how that's going to be handed. Oh, yeah, but it looks like the library is going to be getting some more money. 
And then um, we there was a lot of talk about the 75 cent delivery fund that they're talking about passing at the legislature. If that was going to affect all the, all the things that came into the library. And thinking about that countywide, too, we get a lot of things delivered to the county. Will we have to pay the 75 cents per delivery on that if it passes? Just that process. But um, it did come out that that is not going to be a library situation. So um, that's the library. All right. Uh, soil and water. Yeah, I attended by Zoom. Um, I would just say the business as usual. I have the minutes if anybody wants to look at it more in detail. You know how many trees they sold this year? Yeah, it's in the minutes. Okay. Um, so Pretty much the same. I mean, it's uh, my trees sell trees. Still seems to be doing pretty good. So I had a talk with Paul about that because at our extension meeting we were talking about how um, Carlton County sells flowers, and Pine County doesn't have a lot of those things. Well, what Paul had said was Pine County sells trees. We don't sell the flowers, but um, Carlton County sells flowers and they don't sell the trees. So I checked and. So it's, it's nice that we can work together with the different yep. soil and waters and get those things that we work with. The master gardener sells flowers. Right, but this is like wildflower seeds and, and oh, yeah, oh, so yeah, this yeah. is the seeds yeah, for, for flowers. And pollinator plots and yeah. stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of neat that we can yeah. work together with that. Uh, Kettle River, Paul, how's that coming? Cantle. We're having it next month. Well, that was short meeting then. <laughs> uh, shack meeting. Um, we talked a lot about the COVID emergency is now over and um, talked about legislature concerning hospitals. Um, David sent out an email earlier also about the change the legislature's making. Is that going to be more to how many employees you need to have? Yeah, it's true. And um, the talk of mail may be... Um, Sheila talked a lot about mail. You know, we're so blessed to have the mail here. Um, but if things come down the way that the leg legislature wants, there's a lot of other states that want the mail. And so um, we may end up losing some, which was a big part of the conversation that we had. Um, so you're right, it is important to reach out to those legislatures and say, hey, you know, we need you to think about the whole picture. So. I got a question. Yeah. He's, so COVID's over. David, maybe David is better for this. Is everybody back to work then at the county? Back at their desk, their cubicle, back to sense? No. Uh, everybody is back to work, right? Everyone yeah, is working. Right, but back to where they... We have... Are we back to pre-COVID where everybody was at? We have employees who work regularly from home and from the field, and they'll continue to do that. We were going to put a big addition on the courthouse. How much was that going to cost to do that? Three and a half million. And that was before COVID, so it's more than that now. And because people are able to work at home, and we've got a lot of really good department heads that are checking to make sure that they're doing the work that they need to do. Um, we have some employees that um, can't work at home, and they don't. They come into the office. But other, if they were all coming back into the office, we would be needing to put that addition on the courthouse to house all the employees. So it was Interesting. actually when when the employees like the, the employees that do really good at home they like working at home, and um, there's times that you get messages back from them at like six in the morning and you're going now um, you're not working yet <laughs> stop it. Um, but I was talking to somebody the other day from Human Services and she said I love my job I have to make myself stop because when they're at home they can work more and I know that when I worked at home I did a lot more than I did because you don't have the interruptions so I. It, it's it's a good win win. How many employees is that then? That would, you would um, if you had to put a number on it. It's about uh, 70, seventy that regularly work from home. So seventy, and they never worked from home before. Well, we didn't have a we didn't have the technology probably before. We some of them we started a work from home policy. With public health, actually, uh, probably seven, eight years ago, was it? Becky? Yeah, before. Yeah, I think uh, before when is is the question because we've had a mobile work policy for at least seven years, probably longer. How's our equipment holding up? And that, that's. <laughs>
You know, um, everywhere you go, that some of the big cases they're talking about is with the workforce shortages that we're having. If people can work from home, you're able to get people from different states that can work for you or people from different areas. And it just makes it so that we've got better accessibility to getting the employees that we need to do the jobs everywhere but the jail and the sheriff's office. <laughs> I know, I know um, downtown real estate office building mm -hmm. um, worldwide. It's uh, wondering what's going to happen because um, a lot of those buildings pretty much have are half empty and because people found out they, they can be very productive working from wherever they're working from. Um, and so they don't they don't need that rent that office space anymore or own it. Things that the world has changed. Um, Chemical Health Coalition. Um, it was a good meeting. We talked about the opioid. Um, we talked about the opioid forum that we had, and we talked about the opioid issue. Um, one of the things that I, I brought up in there that we talked about was um, I attended one of the ECHO meetings, and it was based, it was from Hazleton Betty Ford. Um, and it's, it's all Minnesota back, so it's, it's, it's just very interesting. But they were talking about adolescent cannabis and what the cannabis is going to do. And um, they talked about the CBD and what the effect that that has alone right now. And I didn't realize it, but they're putting it, if you go to a brewery, you can buy a brewery that's infused with cannabis and it takes anywhere from one to three hours to hit. So people are drinking with their buddies and up with their buddies that aren't doing the cannabis. And then all of a sudden, um, or not the cannabis, but the CBDs. And then all of a sudden the CBD hits. And a lot of times you're on our road. So that's going to be a big thing for our sheriff's department too, is how to, and we talked about that last Tuesday, how are we going to handle if when cannabis is legal and, and, you know, we've got CBD is legal right now. And how do you, how do you handle the impaired drivers? Um, it's going to get interesting, but some of the facts that were um, scary is that if you are a kid and the kids are anywhere from 13 to 17 years old, um, they said that studies show that youth with the first episode of cannabis, 50% will have a lifetime cannabis use. It can cause permanent depression and you do go through withdrawals. Um, they talked about one mom that um, their child had a hard time sleeping. So they were giving them CBD gummies and it didn't work. So they gave her another one. And she said, I don't understand why they're not waking up. You know, they're, it, it's, they're just not in the right frame of mind. And, you know, so the doctor had to say, well, you know, you shouldn't be giving them any and you're giving them two. Um, so there's so much misinformation out there. You know, it, it, people are saying that it doesn't do any harm, but in all reality, it does. Um, kids, when they use it, they will, it does affect their brain growth compared with a um, home being built the same as with trauma. So um, I think we kind of this is three times. Uh, lakes and pines, uh, mostly approved contracts. Uh, First, in pine powder was in part of lakes and pines, and, and for, uh, I was happy to see that uh, grants came to the town from various sources to cover things like fuel assistance and uh, fixing up houses. I have another to start in those kinds of things. How did they do with the fuel assistance? I know that it, they said last year that they had a lot more money and people were expecting to keep that. It, it was a nightmare for them this year because uh, because they they did not have the funds to fulfill all the requests that came in. in the, you know, they're getting caught up, but now they're it's easier to get caught up when it's warm out. And so it's it's a it's an issue that um, I don't know the, how, how how it's going to play out for the future, Terry. I, I, I did not get a good answer for you know um, how what next winter is coming. Right. We know that. So what are we going to do uh, next winter? 
I don't know. <laughs> that, they it's have it. money so much that right. and then they didn't have it to hand out. So yeah. Um I have another yeah, sure. Go ahead. Just an update. Um you guys all know I was on that probation work group down. Well, we, we, there was a pretty big glitch a week or so ago, and they uh, we ended up with a well, first the background for the JD. We haven't had funding that we're supposed to get state since about 1996 mm. for the probation funding. So yeah. and nothing came out of the the surplus they had this time. No, that's what we were fighting. We went into this thinking we'd try to fix that. So and they have they funded us. They're supposed to fund us 50 percent, and they've been averaging I think around 28 percent. And it's a mandate. It's a state mandate. Well, anyway, so we had this work group going down there, and uh, in the end, we there were some mistakes made not by our group, but um, by um, Department of Corrections, and we're, we thought we we're going to lose about six point some million from. It. We redid the whole thing, so we but we wanted to keep the base funding in place. So we, so we in the end, we ended up with one hundred and fifty thousand dollars base funding. We got the capitated rate. And we got that six point whatever million saved back in. It's not coming out of our, our side. It's going to be replaced by these things. Going to be, I think we're going to be whole. No, I don't. But there's there's some caveats in that. They want to take away the fees that we've been charging, them. and we argued that um, we waive them if somebody can't afford it. But if somebody can't afford it, we're going to put a price on them and all this cost that stuff. We there's a fee. So, and it's a fair process. We're, we're very careful. You know, we, we have a great team in probation. So what they what they agreed to do was so they're not they're gonna sunset that in four years, 20, 27. So we're gonna we're gonna go back to the drawing board and try to negotiate and explain that there wasn't enough time in this session to get hung up on a detail like that. Because right. it was so confusing, because every agency is so different. So we want to just get the basic funding rules in place. So uh, it was a win. But those fees make you think twice about doing the, the fees matter. Yeah, they that do. gives us an agent right now, almost. But it, it's also a consequence for your actions. Yes, and coming up with money is exactly yeah. And that, and and that's our point. Yeah, the whole point in probation is consequences. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, we so we're this. it went. In it's out of conference committee waiting for a governor to sign. It what was a money? battle. That's was, well, we had to work the phones. We were a lot of phone calls. Anyway, so week. by next Tuesday we'll know, right? <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> what yeah. really happened? Well, they're supposed to vote on public safety today. I think. Yeah, Mr. Chair, we might know what happened. We might not know fully what it means. Right. <laughs> oh, then there's one more thing. Yeah. I may have Dave help explain this, but there's a scary thing coming out of the legislature, and as they call it a employee ratio thing they're trying to get. You want to talk about that at all, Dave? Because it might have a huge impact on us. Well, there's there's changes proposed for the Public Employee Labor Relations Act. And so that would change the definition of uh, items that must be bargained. And so I don't know exactly where that stands. Um, there was some, it was, there was some language that was in the House bill that was not, oh, that was in the Senate bill. There was language that was in the bills that came out of the committees for the House and the Senate. The Senate made some amendments on the Senate floor to get a the conference committee. I'm not sure where what the latest is oh. on that. But like I think as as Steve said, we'll know in a week. But it's scary. Yes. Well, it would it would change the bargaining environment significantly. And Terry, you mentioned Mayo earlier. If you read the headline today, you'll see that there's negotiation to carve Mayo out. Oh, <laughs> so where? So they know that it's wrong, but they'll only take one facility out. Well, it's it's 
as I understand it, and I only know what I, I glanced at in the newspaper this morning, but it would carve out any hospital that was in greater Minnesota that had a software management system similar to the one that Mayo has. So then that may all have changed in the last two hours. I don't know. Yeah. Any other other? I, I just want to uh, thank Jeff for the great uh, last week. Your department put on a really great uh, presentation. We appreciate that. And uh, I, I think we're... My, my takeaway from the day that I've told people is you should be awful proud to live in Pine County and, and know what we have for a sheriff's department here. So thank you. Anything else that needs to come before the board? I've seen one thing, if I can. It was in the packet, the Initiative Foundation. Um, it was the Initiative Foundation received the payment of support. It didn't have the amount of the payment. I could circle back to Dave it's later. Like 7,500 bucks. Yeah, it's like 7,350 maybe. It's it's right in that $7,000 range. Um, the county board has made that contribution annually uh, for a number of years. The initiative foundation uh, usually comes to present to a county board meeting every year. And we don't have them scheduled yet, but I anticipate they'll do the same this year. Okay. They do a lot of loans to businesses here, and startups. We hit about four times back every year, four to five times back. Only. Uh, I think it's more than that. I think it is more than that. Yeah. For every dollar we put in, we get yeah. I don't know if it's six or seven back or something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other business? If not, we'll declare the meeting.